So, thank you for that. Um, so, as part of my five-minute introduction into BIM, and there's been a lot of sessions on BIM already at uh, Autodesk University, but I'll give you my uh, five-minute introduction on what BIM is. So, BIM stands for Building Information Modeling. Uh, I, I like to think of it as uh, a better planning, faster visualization, and a stronger management methodology. In fact, if you're on Twitter, tweet this right now. It's uh, really a process. It's not so much software as it is a process that allows you to explore the physical aspects of your project, so things like the height, width, those, those physical parameters, but it's also about the functional parameters, those, uh, the behavioral aspects of a particular project. So maybe it's uh, maybe you're analyzing the water flowing through a pipe, or maybe you're looking at uh, the performance of a building, things like that. So when I think about BIM, I think about it in terms of infrastructure. And I look at it as information modeling for the built environment. Now if you've heard about BIM, how many people have heard of it from an architectural perspective? Right. How many people know it at, from an infrastructure perspective? Uh, about the same. So some, some of you from an architectural, some of you from an infrastructure perspective. And really, if you think about BIM as it applies to uh, infrastructure, all those same things, the, the little boxes with text in it, but that applies to architecture, it applies to infrastructure, it applies to that, that built environment that I was referring to. And very quickly, I just wanted to show you a slide as to why BIM is important from an infrastructure perspective as we look at the life cycle. So, going across from left to right, you have the different stages of a uh, project life cycle or infrastructure life cycle. And this yellow line represents a, a typical approach with uh, maintenance in there. And this is what this line looks like if you defer maintenance. In other words, you don't do maintenance, and later on in the project, you're going to suffer the consequences by sinking in all kinds of dollars to keep that infrastructure up and running. This is uh, an optimized uh, approach where BIM processes come into play. And notice these green areas, so that green area right there, that represents the savings that are possible by implementing a BIM process as part of construction, so those construction savings that, that you get as a result of less change orders and so on. And then these are the potential savings that are possible by implementing BIM if you're looking at it from the whole life cycle perspective of that infrastructure. That's pretty compelling, pretty powerful um, statement pro BIM, Pete. So when I look at building information modeling, I look at the heart of it, and that is model-based design. So whether you're an architect, any, how many architects in the room? So if you're an architect, that information model would probably pertains to a building. If you're an engineer or somebody that deals with infrastructure, that information model might be something that you're familiar with creating inside of Civil 3D. That's the heart of this whole process. And that model gets created based on information that we get from uh, LiDAR data, from survey data, and so on. But it's also that planning component, that GIS component, where we bring in data from all different kinds of environments and use that to help create our, our model, our design. Obviously, simulation and analysis comes into play. So if you're GIS folks, and I think everybody in the room almost knows something about GIS, that talks about geospatial analysis, overlay analysis, things like that. But it's also engineering analysis. We have visualization as part of that BIM process. We have the idea of coordinating the exchange of information throughout that life cycle of uh, talking with planners, bringing information from planners into conceptual design, talking to designers and how do we exchange information there, talking to the construction folks, exchanging information with them, all the way to the operation and maintenance. It's about better construction documents and being able to leverage those documents directly from the model and maintaining that and keeping that in sync. It's also about the construction management aspect. Reducing change orders, being able to look at this model digitally before something gets built so that we can avoid construction pitfalls. And then leveraging all of this information, as I mentioned before, throughout the life cycle, all the way into the managed phases 
and to the end of life of that particular piece of infrastructure. So when I talk about BIM, and throughout the session today, we're going to look at all these different reasons, as Matt explained, as to why BIM. All right? And we encourage you to ask us specific questions, hard questions. Ask him the hard questions. So that's it, basically. Um, really, it's about saving time and dollars throughout that process. All right? So Pete. Well, I want to thank my learned colleague for designing that one slide. 